Yeah, well, uh, we have uh, 30 minutes, so we will cover five sounds that I feel are a little bit um, difficult. Um, but first, uh, hello to everybody, those who don't know me. My name is Sven Skala. I'm the co-founder at Scapago, an online language school. Um, I've been teaching German for more than 10 years, and uh, I think the pronunciation is one of these underrated things, right? That's probably uh, the reason why you came here, hopefully because you're aware of the significance of pronunciation. Um, because, uh, you know, pronunciation, it's... Um, if you get your pronunciation right, your language level just jumps up. Um, it's much more easy, much easier to understand someone with a natural pronunciation. Um, grammar is way less important. It's way more difficult to have a misunderstanding due to grammar than to have a misunderstanding due to pronunciation. Um, and that is also um, linked to another uh, important thing, uh, which is uh, your self-esteem. Uh, many of us are afraid when we speak a foreign language, which is absolutely normal. It's not very rational, of course, but uh, it's also not very rational to be afraid of speaking in front of a crowd, but that's just normal also. So um, your self-esteem when speaking German um, goes up when your pronunciation is natural, when you have this feeling of mastering the, the sounds. And lastly, um, listening comprehension also improves when you have a good uh, pronunciation um, because you train your ears to make the sounds that, uh, no, to distinguish the sounds that you have trained your tongue and your, uh, your lips to form. So I guess let's dive right in. Um, I have a fantastic technical innovation to share with you. I managed to solidify the Zoom screen sharing function. You know, in the old days, you could only share your screen. It was flat. Now I can flip it. I can tweak it. It's absolutely amazing. Um, and I'm going to start with something very narcissistic. I will teach you how to pronounce my name, Verna. Um, because if you listen closely, when I say Verna, you do not hear an R, do you? So the R is difficult and it takes time and I can't do it in these 30 minutes, unfortunately. But um, fortunately, very often in German, we don't pronounce the R as an R. And that's a huge advantage. And it's also one of those features that many people uh, who learn German as a foreign language get wrong. And then it sounds a bit weird, okay? So let's start with the second R here, the one at the end of my name. And you see this ER ending, which is very common in German. You have it in yeah, many functions, uh, names, Mutter, Vater, right? So this ER, uh, what happens when it's at the end of the word, it's nothing else than an uh. Okay, this very undefined sound, like when you're very surprised and you're like, uh, what happened there? Uh, why did my phone die? Uh, I thought I charged it this morning. Okay, if you're at home alone, nobody listening, you can try it yourself. Yeah, I'm, I cannot hear you, so <laughs> nobody can judge you. Uh, try to try to do the sound, this uh, uh, okay? So it's just na, 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 okay? Nothing else. Um, also, the first syllable, so here I will hear the e eh sound because it is within the word. So I told you at the end of the word, when we have an ER ending, we just say this, uh. However, when it's in the middle of the word, then actually we have to go from the vowel, or like a vowel is this A, A, E, O, U, A, O, U sound um, that carries the syllable and go to this uh sound, yeah? So very slowly I'm saying the na. Okay, so it drops like something like the na. Can here I start with the e, eh, and then everything relaxes. Then, uh, okay, is that difficult? I think it's very easy, right? There's somebody who has difficulties with that. Um, shouldn't be too complicated, I guess. Uh, let's practice it with a few other words. In the article dea, no, oh, I'm here. Uh, in the article dea. I have this forced smile A, okay? A, 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 D, A. No R, please. Yeah. 
the the same happens in short words where I have other vowels than an e. So I can say fua. Okay, no r. Fua. We will get to the u in a second. So if the u is not right, uh, uh, I don't mind now. But uh, uh, for now, it's just just the uh at the end. Fua. Okay, and we try this one here. Fua. Okay, you can see that for the O, my lips are very round, very closed. For you know, and one more cool thing about um, German is when it comes to the like real R, uh, basically any R will do with a little tweaks. So if you know say the Spanish R, it will be fine. Just don't roll it too much. If you know how to say the French R, it's fine. If you know the Russian, Arabic, all of that is fine. The only R that does not really work is the American R. Um, but uh, if you have difficulties with the R anyway, and you go for a Southern German pronunciation, like the one that I have, we vocalize even more than the people in the North. So sometimes when people in the north or in the west would actually say an R, we don't. For example, in the word heart, um, in the north they would say something like heart, or heart, but I just, I just drag the R to be a little bit longer and to drop a little bit, okay? I say heart, heart. I do the same with what, yeah, what. It's very Bavarian, but that's fine. Uh, nobody will judge you. So the thing to do is, please notice that, especially if you have an R in your mother tongue, if you have like a strong R, uh, people tend to say Werner. No, in that moment you say my name, you say hello Werner, I know that German is not your first language. You haven't even made a sentence and I know it, okay? So this uh, one thing, the vocalized R, is a super important feature of the German language that unfortunately many students get wrong. Next one is the CH sound, yeah, like an ich, ich, well, you can't read that, right? Ich, okay, how does that work? So, we smile, like this forced smile. Um, we bite on the tongue, here and here. So basically, not on the tip of the tongue, but on the side, okay? So you fix the tongue at these two points here and here. Yeah, so it can, it can still move up and down, but here it's fixed, okay? And now the tip of the tongue goes down. And then we breathe out. Okay, uh, feel free to try that at home in front of your screen with nobody listening, nobody making fun of you. Uh, the mistake you can make and that most students make is that they uh, lift up the tip of the tongue a little bit. When I do that, it becomes a sh, like in English, right? So, and I have this automatic tendency then also to round my lips, right? So these three things, smile, bite on the tongue here and here, and the tip of the tongue goes down under these teeth, actually. It shouldn't even touch these teeth. It's under the teeth, the tip of the tongue. Okay, let's try it with a few, well, few simple combinations. Uh, dich, dich, dich. Or for example, mich, mich. Mich, or slightly more difficult, Licht, Licht, Licht. This one is a bit more difficult, Licht, because now I have to basically remove for the L, I, I would want to have the, t the tongue up, and for the E and the H, I want to put it down. So you have to be a bit fast. Licht. Licht. Okay. 
That is the CH sound that we use when we say an E or an A. I don't have an like, expression, I don't have an example here, um, but there is actually a second uh, CH sound that is similar but not the same. Um, and this one is when the vowel before is an A or an O or an U. Okay, ah, oh, oh. And you can see now what I'm doing here is basically I'm opening my mouth, I'm not biting on the tongue anymore. The whole tongue is down, I'm completely relaxed, and I'm basically breathing out. Ah, ah. You see, everything relaxed here. The tongue is down, it's down here, and I'm biting on it. The tip of the tongue is also down. Ah, ah. Um, it's the same thing you would do if in the winter you want to put like this little fog on the on the on the window and you go like <sighs> that's basically it. It's quite simple. The mistake you can make here is the back of the tongue, so somewhere in here, can be a little bit too high. And then you have this Dutch or Arabic <sighs> Yeah, because there's a vibration with the, what is it called in English? I think uvula, like the thing that is hanging down from, <laughs> from the top of your throat. Um, so you want to avoid that. If that happens, it means the tongue is too far up. Yeah, so you can try it at home. Uh, when it's too far up, it's like, and then you go down. There should be no disturbance. So the only thing that's difficult is to put the tongue down. Uh, let's try with a few words. Uh, za. Zahe. Doh. Oh, watch my mouth. I was really relaxed. Doh. No. No. And the last one. Suchen. It's a bit more difficult with the U, I think. Suchen. Suchen. If it takes you more time, for example, to practice it with the U than with the O, then make sure that it works very well with the O in the combination with the O. And once that works, then you start practicing it with the U. Okay? So any combination that works first, practice it till you're really sure that this works well. And then you then you move on. Cool. Uh, there will be options to to ask questions afterward, but uh, we can also move them to a personal Zoom room afterwards, where you can even talk to me. I'll share the link with you. So please stay here until the end uh, if you have questions that you would prefer to ask outside of the chat. Uh, let's do something fancy. Let's do the U. Okay, so the U with an umlaut. And the U with an umlaut is actually, it has nothing, well, nothing, I don't want to say nothing, but it has not much to do with the U. Um, it has much to do with the E. Okay, so the E like an Ich. Um, but the position of the lips is completely different. The, the lips are very closed. It's basically the same position that you would use for whistling. Ooh, ooh. If you put your lips into that position and you try to say E, like this E, it's not going to work. Yeah? But you may not relax the lips. <laughs> you may not start to smile because then it's an E. Um, they have to be super on. Ooh, ooh. The lips should be super tense. So you should feel the tension, actually. So you have this impression that the sound is actually produced here at the tip of your lips. It's not really true, of course, it's produced in the throat, uh, like any sound, but, um, but you should have this impression, yeah? Um, let's try it also with a few combinations, and that's how you should practice it at home. Um, practice it with other consonants, like with an M, with an F, with a P, with a T, with an S, with all the, all the consonants. Let's start with a few easy ones. Mm. 
And only when that works, go for words again. Okay, mule, mule, für, für. And with a für, of course, remember the beautiful vocalized R. Yeah, no R here. Don't say something like für. It's wrong. Für. You basically have the tension, and then you relax. And it goes out. Okay? That's the U in five minutes. Let's try the U. I have somewhat two approaches for the U. So one thing is that the U is a little bit similar to, the, the, to this uh, sound that you have in English and, for example, to learn, like to learn a language. But when I say that, I have my lips quite open learn right it's, it's relatively open whereas for a german uh, i have to close them again like for the u uh, like this whistling uh, okay um so that's one way of doing it uh, okay the other idea would be again like for the u uh, i come from the e and for the u uh, i can walk to it from the a and as usual with the a i'm smiling no i'm not smiling a okay and i have this feeling at the uh at the tip of the lip sometimes for some students it's difficult to have the distinction between u and u okay you can remember that when I say the tongue is higher up than when I say u. The position of the lips, though, is more or less the same. When you practice it at home, again, start with combinations, yeah, with different letters, and then step by step with words. I'll jump over that now. We don't have so much more time left. Um, for the for the end, let's do something simple, but which I hear very often is wrong for some reason. I, I prefer to do the simple stuff because then it upgrades like your language by by eighty percent, and then the twenty percent well that will take a little bit more. Um, this one, no, Z. Okay, it's we, in German we say Z. I think in British English you say Z, and in American English Z. I'm not sure. I always mix up which which one is which. And it is actually an easy sound. It's nothing different than a t and then a s. Okay? Yeah? Um, it's not a voiced s. It's a, an s without voice. So not this z. It's an s. Yeah, if you put a finger here, you will feel that there is no vibration. When there is no vibration, then it's correct. I think that's uh, why many English speakers get it wrong, because like in words like uh, Zoom, the software we're using here, are amazing, yeah? It's this voiced S, zzz, you can feel the vibration. No, the Z in German is nothing else than tss, like the tire of your uh, bicycle when you push the, I always forget this word in English, it's volve, to where you put the air, and then it makes the sound. Tss. That's it, okay? Let's try it. Guns, guns, tanzen, tanzen, zu, zu. The mistake I usually hear is that the students are not um, aggressive enough. Yeah, so it becomes something like zu. No, 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 no. Zu, uh, like a lot of air in the bike. Okay, zu. Um, when you practice it, exaggerate. It's always easier to go back from something that is a little bit exaggerative than to go up to something that is like not enough. And usually, because you're used to the sound system of your first language, usually uh, when you think you exaggerate it's actually not uh, <laughs> uh, it's it's, it's uh, almost not enough um, sometimes we have this issue with the word arzt 
where we have a T after a Z, okay? So then it becomes a TST, yeah? Tsst. Tsst. Artst. Jetzt. Sitzt. Okay, well, that's an easy one. So, um, yeah. How can you practice that at home? I guess like this has been some 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 twenty minutes of practice, five sounds, really quick. Uh, you want to practice that in a in a longer time. Uh, I will explain that to you in in a second. Uh, but before that, uh, I'd like to show you something because, um, as I said, in most traditional and even modern language uh, courses, schools, apps, uh, the pronunciation is super underrated. Uh, there are also other things that are underrated. I talked about that uh, on, on Wednesday here at Expo Lingua. And one of the things that I find is the most important one is that the material is so boring that you don't want to stick, uh, to stick with it or you don't want to work with it. So um, that's what made me decide to uh, make my own materials actually. Um, so I published um, a German course for A1 and A2 level. Uh, it will eventually continue to B1 and B2, but only at the end of the year. And uh, it is made on, up on a career and story. So the idea is that there is a story about a sparrow from Berlin who drops out of his nest and who uh, is raised by humans and uh, observes the family and the consequences of the uh, separation of Berlin uh, that is now coming to an end and that is bringing up uh, all sorts of hidden uh, secrets that this family used to have. Um, so it's not like this typical story, uh, uh, yeah, that is like somebody randomly traveling to Germany and, and taking a taxi to the hotel. Um, it's, it somehow develops into a novel, but it starts super, super simply and teaches you basically the whole vocabulary and the whole uh, grammar that, that you need. Um, I decided to make it as an online video course because there I can also go into the details of the whole pronunciation. So I'm teaching you all the sounds um, and not only teaching you how to make them, but there is also a ton of exercises where we repeat it. So you can uh, really have a very, very solid foundation of the German language. Um, I also do um, exercises that you can download, that you can put on your phone or uh, on your iPod and walk in the forest and listen to them, repeat what is being said, or sometimes you have to react to, um, to the exercises so that you learn actually how to speak German, even though you might not have a teacher around or even though you might not have the budget for a, for a teacher. Um, I'm, I've just launched this uh, course this week and since it's like, well, it's 95% uh, finished, but I want to tweak like a few tiny things. Um, I have a special discount for all the attendees of the Expo Lingua. Um, you can uh, uh, lock in a 50% discount if you join the course this weekend. It's actually, the, the regular price is about 20 euro per month. Uh, so it's a fraction of the course of, uh, uh, at a traditional language school, although it's 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 much more fun and, and hopefully also much more useful, mm, but uh, you can get it uh, at even uh, fifty percent cheaper. So it's uh, less than a cup of coffee per week, I would say. Um, um, you can try it. It's uh, thirty days refund uh, if you don't like it. Uh, you send me an email. You throw some virtual rotten tomatoes at me and. Uh, um, yeah, and then you, you get your money back. Um, yeah, I'd be happy to, to, to see you there. Um, you can use this link here, bit.ly slash Jens Jakob. And I'm not sure, I think it's also being shared in the chat or I can share it in the chat when uh, I walk out of the screen sharing here. Please click on the link now because when we close the Zoom room, it will disappear and you will not find it again. And um, this is like a one-time, um, one-time offer, I'm not, uh, I, I, I never give like 50% discount. So sometimes I have a sale where I give like 10% or 20%, but 50% uh, is only for beginners. Uh, also if, um, yeah, we have the, we have four minutes left. So um, 
we will do a, a Q and A in my like personal or yeah my personal Zoom room. I will also share the link to that in a minute. Um, so you have to leave that meeting if you want to talk to me in person about the course, about learning German, about other languages. Um, yeah, we have a nice degree of construction work here. You you, you can hear it. Uh, it's a bit annoying. I'm sorry. Um, then uh, yeah, please just come to this other room in in five minutes or in four minutes. And uh, there, you can also use your microphone, your camera. So uh, if you want, you can you can show me your difficulties with U and with uh, C eight. Um, yeah, if you're a blogger or a teacher, you're interested in this course for your target group for your students. Uh, please get in touch with me. Um, I can share you also my my contact details. Um, yeah, I will walk out of the screen sharing here uh, just to uh, yeah you can see the. Uh, the link here, uh, bit.ly um, slash uh, Jens minus Jakob, sharing it one more time here. Um, uh -huh, I did it wrong with, uh, you know, I don't get it with these um, all panelists and participants. Okay, how can you practice pronunciation? What you learned here um, is not enough, obviously. Yeah, It will take time. If you want to learn a more difficult sound, like the R, for example, it might take you weeks, it might take you even months, but it does pay off. I never understand why in the language schools they, they, they obsess about grammar for months and years, but um, with a pronunciation, they show you one word, you mispronounce it, and they give up. Don't do that, please. It will take time until you get it right. That's absolutely normal. My suggestion, twice a day, morning, evening, in front of the mirror in the bathroom. Why in front of the mirror? Well, obviously, everything I've just said, for example, a CH sound. Well, you can check, is that true? Am I smiling, actually, or am I not smiling? When you say the U, I see all the students relaxing their mouth, and then they see E, E, E. You can check yourself on the mirror, okay? Don't do it too long. Don't uh, like don't stand there half an hour. It's not worth it. Make a small, nice routine out of it. Five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening, and you go from one sound to the other. So start with one sound that you find particularly difficult, say the CH sound, practice it a couple of days, a couple of weeks, until you feel, yeah, okay, that's really that's really improving. No, then you can do another sound. Okay. Also, when you um, when you practice. Uh, make sure that you start with the sound isolated, then with the sound combined with other letters, and then with whole words. So never go and start uh, the CH sound with uh, Licht, right? You start just with a H. Sometimes it's easier to do it with another sound combined, like for example the E, if you want to do the ich, then ich, yeah, that's, that's much easier. Um, but at the beginning, usually try to isolate the sound, and then add more letters. And whenever you stumble, go one step back. So when you say Licht and it doesn't work, go back to Ich, okay? Uh, yes, so one minute. Uh, so now I will uh, share this beautiful link with you if I manage to do that. Um, just a second. So I'm sharing the link for my other Zoom room here. So wait, yeah, three minutes, please. <laughs> uh, or now you, you can click on it now, but it will take three minutes until I walk over there. Um, and otherwise, I'd be happy, as I said, to see you in the um, in the course. Uh, if you're interested in checking it out, make sure to try it this weekend because after that, uh, <laughs> you will not have the the same discount. Thanks so much for participating, and I hope I will see um, some of you in my in my personal Zoom room in a minute. Thank you, and have fun on the Expo Lingua also.